Welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We have completed a series of six core apps that we would recommend you install on your watch. Today I want to show you another one that's kind of a transitional one. You could call it a core app if you really think it's something you'd use, or it's one of those optional ones that maybe you might pass on. Either way you look at it, it's really powerful. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you, since the last video, what, a week ago, the developers over there playing with the watch faces have combined their efforts and come up with some pretty creative uh, new, what they call clock skins that we'll run through just to whet your appetite for what you can do with this number one D5 smartwatch phone. All right, this is one where the background is like one of those plasma spheres. And then these glowing hands were created. And then somebody put this all together and made this watch face, which is elegant, sweet, and rather unusual. I don't know if you see that in Android Wear anywhere. Somebody else stepped in and did a little modification on that one and came up with this one, which gives you your steps and your pedometer, your heart rate, the date, your weather conditions. If you're in a country where the weather works on this watch, once again, in the U.S., this doesn't jive yet. They're going to fix it, I hope, someday. Uh, but nonetheless, it's on the screen. So that was pretty nice, and if you noticed, it's rotating as well. Another developer took that background and put it in motion. And then I jumped in and said, well, what I really like to know is what's my battery percentage and the date. I'm not wanting all that other clutter on there. So this is what I came up with as a modification of the modification of the modification of the original design of the hands and the background and all put together into one watch and available well, mine isn't yet, but the others are available for download off of the XDA Developers Forum. And I will have a link in the bottom of um, this particular video, which you'll find over on the YouTube channel. If you're not watching, if you're watching an embedded video, head over to youtube.com slash smartwatchticks, all one word, and look for uh, part number three of our core app installation. Well, if that wasn't enough... Imagine if you have a rotating background against a fixed background that's transparent, which you can kind of see a little bit behind here. Well, let's make it a little more obvious. Let's go and look at what another developer did keying off of this idea using moiré patterns to create this effect. Again, using the glowing blue hands. This is a vibrant, live community of players who are collaboratively using simple software design to create these watch faces that you can simply drop in your D5 watch. And then there's this one. And again, you could add date and time and steps and pulse rate and all sorts of other things to it. Or you can just leave it simple and plain. You can change out the hands for gold or silver or black or red or whatever you'd like, glowing or not glowing, fat or thin. Any hands you see on any of these watch faces could be used in this or any other design. It's really happening, folks. This came out this morning. And last one I'll show you. We've seen that one. We've seen that one. We've seen that one. <laughs> One of our developers is a, uh, what you call, stay-at-home dad. And he had a few minutes while his daughter was at lunch today to work up this little doozy, throwing in everything plus the kitchen sink to create a data center in his lunchtime. We're all teasing him, going, can't wait to see what happens at dinner, or, hey, <laughs> we'll pay for a babysitter. <laughs> Show us what you can do. Anyway, gotta love it. XDA developers form on the clock faces for the D5, also known as the K8 Mini, which is similar to but not identical to the K8, which will also work with all these watch faces. This is the K8 round. You'll see a K8 uh, rectangular kind. It's not that one. It's the K8 round. But I'm here to talk about a utility that we're going to install, and it's called Assistive Touch. Now, there's a caveat with this, and I want to make this really clear because this is the first one we're treading into dangerous territory. There are several classes of apps, usually the kind that want to do things in the background, like some of your um, 
oh, catch-all things like the clean master type or the 360 security or all of those kind, they might get to a point where they're asking you for administrative permission to do things like just when you touch a button, turn your screen off. That's usually fine and dandy and on your Android phone, you can go in there, you can do that, and later if you want to uninstall it, you can press a button and um, go into that little area again, uncheck the application, which takes it out of being an administrator, and uh, uninstall it. The problem here is, with the D5, the stripped down Android menu overlay in the security section does not have an option to go in there and look at that stuff. So once it's installed, you can't uninstall it. And you can see I've made some attempts at doing some things and um, all it did was like replicate its presence. There's only one app installed, but it's showing up again and again in my stream of all of my installed apps. Ah, uh, don't want to go into the stopwatch. But anyway, I've installed it. I love it. I plan on keeping it at this point. The only way I could get rid of it is to do a factory restore and start all over. So be leery if an app asks you if it uh, can have permission to become an administrator because if it does, you got it and you can't uninstall it. So when you look for administrative touch, you're going to see a whole bunch of uh, possibilities show up in the Google Play Store. This particular one is by the uh, assistive touch team as the developer. And what it'll do is put a little round button on your screen that allows you, when you touch that button, to bring up a menu. Looks something like this. It's currently disabled. When I enable it, you see the little dot shows up here. Now, I like that on this particular one because it's happening at just about the 3 o'clock, 2.30 position, a little bit above where I've got the slider for the brightness, so it doesn't get in the way as long as you make it short and definitely not off the screen. There are other ones that do something similar, but when they put the button on the screen, they put it like in the upper left-hand corner, and you can't get to it or see it on the watch. So the only way to deal with that is to use MobiZen to go on with the computer. Remember, that's in our first uh, of these three-part or more series on core apps. Go in there from your computer and move it somewhere onto the screen where you can see it. Then you can move it around. And you got to set up some special conditions in the settings so that when you reboot your watch, it'll still be visible on the screen. This one's kind of simple. It works right out of the box, and it gives you that little button right there every time. When you start up your phone for the first time, it shows up. You notice there's another little button here. We're going to be talking about that in the next uh, video, which are going to be utilities for working with voice. Now, that's nothing to do with this one. We're only talking about the button here, but you'll see it here in a second. So what happens after it's enabled when you touch it? You see it shows up even when the clock face is there. I touch it, and I get a menu on the screen. Now I can do things like go home, which it already is at, but if I'm somewhere in here, in one of the apps, for example, let's say we're in the app cache cleaner, which I probably should do. Remember uh, we mentioned that it cleans it on a regular interval. That was in our second uh, part. Now we've got a few things that have got some cache piled up. We're just going to clear all, and it closes it. Simple as that. Nice. I can launch this. I can go home, and I'm back at my home without touching the mechanical button. Part of this beautiful thing is to make sure that you don't uh, wind up using your button more than you have to. You should only have to use it once to turn the watch on if it's off. After that, everything can be controlled from the button. If I want to clear my installed apps, I press and hold on home. And there's no recent ones listed here, but I'd hit close all. I want to get out of here. Of course, I could push the button or I can press the dot and go home. And I'm back to the clock face. You can clean. We already cleaned the cache with the other app, but you can hit the clean button there. When you hit lock, and this is the one that uh, got me in trouble in a sense, when I hit lock the first time it said, in order to use this to shut off your watch, in other words, lock it if you had a password, or just turn it off if you don't, it needed administrative privileges. And I accepted that. And now when I touch it, it turns the watch off. And the only way to turn it on is to touch the button. Okay. 
If you don't ever accept that and don't ever use that, you can install this and uninstall it later. But once you accept those administrative privileges, you cannot disable it or uninstall it from the watch. And again, that's true of every app that you're going to come across that asks for administrative privileges until somebody, hopefully you out there, has figured it out and can put a comment down below and we will definitely include the instructions on how to disable administrative privileges on apps that you've given it to in a future video. All right, the settings takes us to another page where we have all these different uh, options. Off the screen slightly here is Wi-Fi. Toggle turns it on and off. It's always on because I'm always in Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, portrait mode, your location services. You can do volume up and volume down. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I got my slider here, but I don't have the volume up here anymore because it actually was really hard to get to, and because you're going left and right, it wants to change pages if you don't hit it just right. It's so easy to just tap the button, hit either volume up or volume down, and then grab the slider and slide it where I want. Wait a half a second or two, and it'll disappear. And of course, you can micro, you can't like repetitively do it, but you can adjust it a little bit at a time, or just grab it and move it wherever you want. So with that feature built into this nice little um, floating command structure, I don't have to have the volume separate there because it's easy to get in quickly. A flashlight, which doesn't work, of course, because we don't have a light on the back of this. And then you can go into airplane mode. These are your basic, um, mostly used system applications that are available by hitting settings. When you hit favorites, you get a page surrounded by a back arrow of app positions that you can install the apps you want to use. Now, the very first one that's off the screen is this particular um, uh, application. And if I touch it, it goes me back, takes me back here, and then I could disable it at that point if I want to. Touch it again, and it'll enable it. It always puts the button back there. Okay. But the others are open for you to use. And in the next video, we're going to talk about Google, of course, where you can basically hit the microphone and speak to the Google system and say whatever you want. You're all familiar with that. We're going to look at Open Mic, which is a way of allowing you to do OK Google from any screen on the watch or change it to say whatever you want. It doesn't have to be OK Google. It could be Wake Up Watch or Hello Martha, whatever you want. And speech to clipboard we're going to be covering, as well as that little button you saw a minute ago that's floating right in the middle. All these are voice entry techniques to control, utilize, and seek information from your watch. Coming up, subscribe if you haven't. Tell your friends. We love you. Uh, the note apps, um, your basic note one we talked about in other videos. A lot of coverage on that when we went through the ZGPAX S8 watch. Uh, really good app. Google Keep, which allows you to synchronize whatever notes you put in here across all your Google Google platform. The Apis browser, which is the really the best browser you could put on a watch, not Apis Browser Turbo. That has a problem with mapping the keyboard on this watch, but the basic one, Apis Browser, which supports ad blocking and um, little buttons that you can go into different apps that you set right on your watch. Really good and very thin, lightweight browser. And then Stitcher is the one that I use to play the news and stuff like that. And a uh, good example of how we can do that volume button. I go in here, I go to settings, I go to volume up. And crank it up. Want to subscribe to our paid same day premium audio content. And of course I can bail out of here. Leap day gets off to a beautiful wow. start tomorrow with a close encounter between the moon and Mars. The planet looks like a bright orange. Change star, star faces. Below the moon as they climb into good view around Oops. one or two AM and closer to the lower left of the moon at first light. Mars is growing brighter in a hurry right now. That's because Earth is closing fast Touch the on its neighbor world. Go to favorites. Smaller, Go to Stitcher. The, sun. the two planets are like... And pause it. You see how convenient this is? Clean the cache. Go home. 
I missed the button, so I've gone into the basic thing, but I can touch and go home again. All those good things are available simply by installing this app. Okay, what are we talking about? Assistive Touch for Android. Now, they also have Assistive Touch 2 for round. Per personally, I like this rectangular one, even though it's off-center. The icons are bright white against black, but floating, so it's easy to see in bright light. This one, though, is really made for uh, a round device. You have all of your buttons in a circle around a center control that lets you go forward and back to different areas. You have your favorites over here. It's icon-driven, and basically the same controls. And you can install all the apps that you use most frequently in a circle as well. And it is right in the middle of the watch as well. But just like this one, i got to warn you, if you do that button lock up here at the top, it's going to ask you for permission. Once you give it, you cannot take it away, and you can't uninstall it. At least we don't know how yet. So if you're going to do that, you're going to have it permanently on your watch until you do a factory restore. All right. That wraps up this one because that's uh, like an app in and of itself to talk about Assistive Touch, Assistive Touch 2. We will be back to talk more about what you can do with um, things like this. Oh, I missed the button. Open Assistive Touch. And there we are. And now it's disabled. No button on the side. Re-enable it. Bye-bye.